Simon from simonwoods.com. Six beauties from the longer dock. I don't know, I've not tasted them, so let's have a see. Um, I've, got, well, I've got two whites, I've got three reds, and I've got a 45 wine to finish. Uh, you can't cover the whole of southern France in six wines, but uh, because there's loads and loads of stuff going on. But I th the reason I, I thought I'd get these two whites, one of them is labelled with the varietal name on. So this is Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, they have Sauvignon Blanc down in that region. And um, let's give it a whirl. 2009 under what's called Ave Avery's, so UK wine merchant, Project Winemaker. Nice, clean, fresh, lemony. I mean, Sauvignon grows in several countries around the world. New Zealand's probably the most famous place for it, but um, the idea here is to produce something that people are familiar with, but we should get some starting to drink French wine. And uh, this smells like it's gonna be nice, clean, fresh, Perfect, what I call uh, cricket match wine, although I suppose if you're on holiday you don't get too many cricket matches. So maybe this is sit on the deck and have a glass of something, and then have a glass of something slightly more profound later on. Or maybe another glass of this. There's a nice fresh character there. And um, when did you last have tinned pears? It's almost as if someone's crunched up tinned pears, and you're getting that smoky, musky flavour there. Delicious, um, perfect. Uh, it's a February day here, and I actually wish I was down in the south of France enjoying the weather there. But um, on a day like this, even it has its attractions even even today. So um, good start. Let's see what the next one's like. So this one uh, is labelled. Doesn't have a great variety on the label. Just says Corbiere. So first one labelled according to the great variety. This one labelled according to the region. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I suppose if you, you want to put it in uh, terms, does, if you say um, Lancashire hot pot to somebody, do you need to explain everything that goes in? No, because if you've come across a Lancashire hot pot, uh, then you know what it is. If you haven't come across a Lancashire hot pot, you think, what is it? Is it a pot that is hot and that comes from this part of the world? Hey, uh, if you're in France, you'll be familiar with Corbiere. If you're not, well, you might not be uh, familiar with it. And if you're certainly not in France, you probably won't know the great varieties in here, which um, I'm not sure what they are, but they're things that are not very familiar, like Bourboulanc and uh, Grenache Blanc, and maybe a bit of Roll in there. You don't know them, that's why they've not put them on the label. Let's try the wine. And the strange thing is here, it's got something of that similar character to the first one. It's got zip, freshness, and it's got this bit of uh, pear character. Um, feels like it's, got, it's a year older, and it feels like it's just that little bit more weighty. Uh, that's not to do with it being a year older, that's to do with the, uh, the grapes in the first place. The Sauvignon was uh, all about youthful freshness. This one seems to have a bit more weight to it. So whereas maybe the first one seemed to be like, uh, sit on the deck and have a, a glass wine, this is much more, uh, okay, let's have some chicken and uh, let's have, some, have it in a nice creamy mushroom sauce. Yeah, it's slightly more exotic than the Sauvignon. Still got freshness, uh, but it's got these edges of guava um, and uh, tasty. Maybe not as fresh when you swallowed it, or spat it out, as the, as the first one, but um, more flavour, more going on in there. Nice wine. Next one, down, we are back. Uh, the first one was a labelled Van de Pay Doc. This one is just labelled IGP Paydoc. You don't really need to know what IGP stands for, but it's, it's from this, uh, this Paydoc. What you're going to see over the next few years is the, these things that say Van de Pay disappearing, and it says IGP, Indication Géographique Typique. In other words, Van de Pay. Ah, oh, the French love changing rules. Uh, okay, this is Cuvée des Amandiers, and it's a red, uh, and um, how much is it? It's about five quid from Majestic. And it says on the back, helpfully, uh, some, some wines say things helpfully on the back. Um, this one says it's a blend of Grenache and Syrah. Syrah is the same as the Shiraz grape, um, just a different name for a diff in a different place. And Grenache is the, the wine, that the, the grape that they use for uh, Côte de Rhone and Chateauneuf du Pape. Now this is nice, juicy, gluggable stuff. Um, I don't know if you ever uh, chill your red wines, but this is this for me is all about bouncy young fruit. And uh, I eat a wine, I'd be very happy to uh, sort of stick away in a fridge for half, not too, too long, but half an hour, just to give it a bit more freshness and bite. Because it doesn't feel like there's going to be any hard edges there. It just smells juicy, soft, fruity and friendly and have a swig soon, so I will. Nice, bright, spicy, bags of fruit. Um, just a bit of chewiness on the end to remind you that it's a wine rather than uh, than cordial. And um, 
bring on the sausages, get them off the barbecue, have a large glass of that, well, I mean, you almost want a half pint pot with that, and um, it's all about young, immediate fruit. Yeah, delicious. Um, and it's got a screw cap, so, I mean, you can take it on a picnic and uh, take it down to the beach and uh, don't take it, put it somewhere where it's too warm and it, uh, it, it boils over, but yeah, try and keep it on the cool side. Okay, next red. Um, now this one's unusual because it's got both a great variety on the on the label, Carignan. Maybe not everyone's heard of Carignan, but it's a it's a grape that uh, that grows in a lot of southern France, and uh, most of the time it's not all that good. But when it gets to past a certain age, suddenly um, it, it's as if it says, right, okay, I'm going to start performing now. So uh, you'll often see people put old vine Carignan on the back. So this Carignan from uh, an appellation. Um, a denominated region called Minervois. So they had Corbier there with no great varieties on there, but Carignan from uh, Minervois. Friendly, juicy, vibrant, uh, but it's a different sort of friendliness from, the, from uh, the one before. The one before was really like lovely, almost like breakfast wine. This one has a bit more weight and body behind it, and uh, a bit more spice, a bit more fleshy fruit. Yeah, this is definitely bring on the, uh, the barbecued... Um, Oh, I don't know what barbecue. Yes, a bit, nice bit of steak off the barbecue for this one. Yeah, Minervois is not all that close to um, uh, to, to the Mediterranean. It's quite, not miles inland, but what happens is you go inland, uh, the land starts rising. You get you get into the hillsides, and as you rise, it gets a little bit cooler. So the grapes that are grown there tend to be fresher. No shortage of flavour, but you still you you get freshness with the powerful flavours. So here you've got a wine that's. Um, that really is, yeah, bags of bags of flavour. Maybe a bit simple, but um, Carignan is not a, a grape that uh, makes for me amazingly complex wines. And I actually prefer it when it's in a blend with some other things. But seeing it by itself, drink it, yeah, drink it when it's like this, at its youngest and its more, most youthful. Because it ages, it gets us ever so slightly raisiny character, which some people love. Uh, personally, I like it when it's nice and bouncy and tigger-like like this. Okay, next wine. I think this is the heaviest bottle, and of course a heavy bottle means that wine's going to be good. Domaine du Silène Grand Cuvée. And uh, it's from a place called Gré de Montpellier in, uh, in the Languedoc. And 2004, so quite a bit older than uh, some of the others. As I said before, age isn't always uh, necessarily a good thing, but there are some certainly beefy red wines that, um, that do age uh, do really benefit from the age. It's not that you can't drink them when they're when they're young, but it um, be interesting to see what this is like. And the strange thing is, it's made from the same two grape varieties, Syrah and Grenache, as uh, this uh, this one here, uh, the the Cuvée des Amandiers. Uh, but it's a completely different beast. It smells uh, it smells different. Uh, it, it smells like it's a more ambitious wine. It smells like it's been in an oak barrel. There's this like vanilla and toastiness coming through. And uh, it's, it's one of the problems when, when people sort of think, oh, I like Sauvignon Blanc. If someone said, I like Syrah Grenache blends, well, there's a big difference between these two. So um, that's, maybe that's one of the reasons why the French developed the Appellation system. It tastes more of a place than of uh, the ingredients. But you're getting warm, herby, um, almost port-like uh, intensity here. It feels like the fruit was very, very ripe. Maybe a bit overripe for some, but um, it smells like it's going to be plush and velvety and welcoming, especially on a February morning. Well, it's certainly a rich, full-bodied wine. Um, feels like they've almost done a little bit too much to it. I mean, I, they've they've made a wine and then they've continued making it and they've they've done this with the oak and they've done this and. It's almost like they didn't know when to take their hands off it and just let it be. And um, the strange thing is, though, whereas it's got more flavour and it's got more going on in there than the uh, Cuvée des Amandiers, the cheap one, I actually think, as a drink, uh, I like that just as much. I like the cheap one just as much as this more expensive one. Final wine. We are on Mori, M-O-U-R-Y. I always think they should do a campaign for this called something like there's something about Mori or Mori Christmas and because um, it's a wine style that I think uh, people in, in, in the UK would love. Uh, it's a fortified wine. So in other words, they've added some uh, a neutral grape brandy to it in order to boost the alcohol level. And they add it before the fermentation's finished. So before all the sugar in the grapes has turned to alcohol. So there's still some sweetness in the wine. 
chop chop the brandy in and uh, the yeast goes bleh, carks it and uh, leaving you with something that's got quite high alcohol what's the alcohol here uh, no, not too high 15 and a half percent and uh, but, but, but with some sweetness so this is Domaine Poudreau 2004 yo like, I don't know if you ever remember cherry chocolate liqueurs, where they had like a liqueur, uh, cherry that had been soaked in, uh, in brandy, and then enrobed, it was always enrobed, wasn't it, in, in dark chocolate, very much like that. Chocolate, kirsch, and um, winter warmer, it was like it, it, you, you feel your, your uh, pipes being covered in velvet, and uh, someone pouring that mixture of Christmas pudding and chocolate cherries down which I'm sure you can pay lots of money in certain clubs to, uh, to experience. Tasty wine. It's February, uh, that would be perfect with Christmas pudding, but I've got another 10 months to wait till that. I don't think that bottle's gonna last that long. See you soon.